Um, so when you when you meet somebody who's never heard of Tangible Express, um, tell me a little bit about what you tell them. Try to explain the fact that we are have a dual role, that we are a service provider that can help them with prototyping or um, limited production, and they some of the things that differentiates us from the competitors is the fact that we have all new equipment, we have some uh, industry experts in there, we have both technologies, both SLA and SLS and the largest platforms in those technologies. We have 11 different materials that uh, can facilitate most of their opportunities. But what really differentiates us from the rest of the competition is the fact that we have this optional deal with ownership, uh, fractional ownership, where if in fact they do a lot of prototyping, they can uh, reduce their cost substantially by, by buying a portion of a machine. And not only does that reduce their cost, but they're able to uh, amortize that, depreciate it down that you have all the tax benefits of owning their own machine with none of the challenges. And um, when they get into looking to buying their own machine, we can be a good stopgap between them having to ramp up, buy a whole machine, learn how to do it and everything. Uh, we can take and help them as they build up their volume. But also, realistically, once they get started, they don't have to uh, actually end up buying a machine in that they don't have to have a uh, controlled environment. They don't have to have uh, technicians that are necessarily, are usually hard to come by. They don't have to, they're not curtailed into having a single machine with a single uh, type of technology, a single material. They're able to buy a portion of one of our machines and end up with all the technologies, all the different materials, giving them total flexibility, and it seems to uh, uh, grab their interest usually very well. The people that you have been talking to um, already know and maybe are using, to some degree, either rapid prototyping or rapid manufacturing? Do you have to educate them on what it is? It, it's a complete... Um, uh, variation of all those different of all the different categories because I find that the customers that everyone else is going after understand prototyping but don't necessarily understand where it is today there's a lot of misinformation out there because the technologies change so quickly um, you have everything from someone that owns several machines but not necessarily all the technologies that we have to someone that doesn't have a clue about prototyping whatsoever. Uh, we find that the vast majority of manufacturers of uh, consumer products are very unknowledgeable about how proto what prototyping can do for them, what prototyping is, and if they had any relationship with prototyping at all, it was the old technologies of which were very brittle, fragile items that they couldn't do anything with. Once they find out they can provide, we can provide them with samples that they can take directly to their buyers, show them a production sample, looks and tastes like a real production sample, without having to do any tooling. Far beyond, far before they, uh, they have to start the expense of the tooling, that's a real asset to them. In today's world, of selling to um, major retailers, mass merchants, that type of thing. The, the normal scenario is you make an appointment with a buyer at Walmart. He wants to see a production sample. He doesn't want to be fed something that is an illusion or a, a right. possibility. But then he takes a look at it and uh, most buyers have their own opinion of what things should be so they say gee, this is really neat, but if this was just 30 degrees different and blue, I'd have supreme interest in it. Well, if you've already gone to, to tooling on it, you're kind of stuck. So having being able to show them a prototype that looks like a real production piece, you're able to modify that 
and say, not a problem, we'll change that 30 degrees, we'll make that blue, and I'll have you another sample back of a production product in two weeks. Then he takes a look at that and says, yes, I want that. Now, you know this is for next year at this time. Okay, and we are only going to be the only ones that want to handle that particular product. I don't want you to sell this to anybody else. So then you're able to take and say, not a problem, and in six months you start tooling for it. You have your tooling done by the time you're ready to produce it for them, and that solves that whole problem. Today, it's a completely different world with most uh, people making consumable products. So when somebody hears this, um, is that all it takes? I mean, is it, is it so inherently logical, it sounds that way to me, that if they understand it... Um, if we do a good job of explaining it, then we grab their interest. Okay. 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 Then they say, okay, how much does this cost? And what do we have to give you for it? If they are an astute enough designer that they can give us 3D drawings, uh, you know, 3D mm -hmm. uh, format, then it's really a slam dunk for us to give them a sample, show them what can be done, we explain what the cost is, and they give it a try. Once they give it a try, then they're hooked. Then they say, this is really fantastic. You know, we can use this all the time. They have to actually see their own parts in a true example of a prototype for them to really get hooked into how great it can be for them. And then uh, you also have the situation of instead of having a single prototype, say they've got a series of uh, 20 salesmen out there and they want to get a good feel in the industry or present it to many different buyers, you can give them 20 samples to run out there look like production items before they ever go to Thule. From that then they start doing business, they, they see how far it can go, then they get interested in the fractional ownership because we show them on every single invoice how much their cost is and how much their cost could be if they own part of a machine and that pretty well sells itself on that. What industries, um, what industries, if any, do you think are the most under leveraged when it comes to um, when it comes to understanding the value that these machines and these systems could have for them? I think the reverse of that, the two industries that have been approached the most with it and probably are the most astute at it would be aerospace and automotive. Okay. Other than that, when we get into architecture, we get into jewelry, we get into uh, consumable products, um, customer products, food in uh, food related uh, handling products. All those types of things are things that don't look like the industry has uh, attacked those yet at all. Okay. Anything else you think we should um, put on our website or post from you? Just that it is our goal to be an educational source for the customers that we've already talked about and bringing, bringing the whole concept of what prototyping and rapid manufacturing, low volume manufacturing, what those are, how those concepts can all be of benefit to, to all different types of business. That is our goal and then from that can be the success of providing those opportunities for those customers. Okay.